All right, we're back. And no, I promise uh, you did not miss a stream. I am not streaming at the moment because, well, my internet sucks. So I figured I wouldn't subject everyone to having to sit and watch a stream that's just going to buffer every three seconds. So I figured I would still do a little development update, or at least I should say, show you guys kind of how I put things together. So right now, <clears throat> I'm in the game. Then I'm in Construct 2, and this is just a blank layout, just a blank area that you can run around um, right now with Sid. So, obviously there's nothing in it, and I also have a map here that I use to kind of keep track of the areas that I've done or have yet to do, and this is what's in the game so far. Now, a lot of it doesn't work yet, it's not like put together, but the scenes are obviously done. So I am in this layout that's going to be right here. So as you can see, I'll we'll zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to get all pixelated because it's not a huge, huge image. So this is going to be the layout right here. And I'm thinking I might put like a little bit of a pond in it. I like the water area, but uh, obviously this river kind of comes and then turns, but then it, you know, what does it do here, right? So I think I'm going to have it come here, maybe wrap around, go through here, and come back. And then terminate at a pond. But the pond is going to have an island in the middle of it. And it's going to have the dungeon entrance that we made earlier on the live stream. Um, which you can also find the YouTube clip for. Uh, as soon as it uploads, which I don't think, I think it's still processing at the moment, so it'll be up very soon. But yeah, so I think we're going to put a pond here, not directly in the center. Um, that's kind of boring. The thing with making these layouts and stuff like this is they can't be pointless. They can't have things or dead ends that run off to nothing. Like They have to have a purpose, right? So you, there has to be something in a dead end that makes me want to go there or a purpose to it, whether that be a secret or there's an object there that you can collect or what have you. There has to be a reason. I also like to put things off that you can't necessarily get to immediately uh, off kind of in the viewable area that makes you like, how do I get over there? Like you want to know, you know, obviously there's some way to get over there and you got to figure it out. So that's one trick of, one of the hard parts, I should say, of designing these layouts, is you really have to, they have to have a purpose, and you got to figure it out along the way, usually. <laughs> so we'll go into here, and we have our environmental, environmental pieces. I'm about to go mental. Um, so this is what they look like. So here's like the river slash ground pieces that we'll use to make our little area. And these pieces are corners that kind of go up. Um, I'll definitely end up using one of those. So we'll just go back to construct. We'll just throw that in. Now, I'm on the wrong layer right now. It's on tree structure tops, which we do not want. So we're going to go ahead I'm going to plunk this down into background items. Background color is specifically for the color, right? So then we have background items, which should have our environmental pieces on them. And like I said, we're using render cells, uh, which is a great nifty thing in Construct that only renders things that's in your viewport. So even though this layout is gigantic, it'll only render about this much of the screen if not a little less. Yeah, and that really cuts down on uh, the amount of GPU usage it has to use to run the game, so you're, it's going to perform a lot better. So, we've got all that there, and I'm just going to start grabbing pieces that I know I'm going to need. Except again, I'm on that. So always make sure you're working on the right layer and that you have that layer selected. So we're going to lock it and we're going to select the right layer this time. I'm going to go over here. 
everything was made to kind of link together, right? So, cool. All right. Now, the best way to do this is to do it like this. They're kind of designed to overlap this way. We'll change the Z order, bring it to the top. We'll just duplicate each of these until it fits. Ta da. Okay. Now, Sid's on his own layer. So that's easy enough. We can unlock it if we need to move him later or whatever. But for right now, we're just going to keep it like it is. So, like I said, we're going to kind of have uh, an island in the middle here. So we're going to make like our little pond area and then we're going to put it in the middle. And you'll need, obviously, one of your items to get up there. I won't say which which, which item you'll need, which which. I will not say which item you'll need because it will probably greatly spoil some stuff. And again, go from the top. And we're going to go like this. Oh no, Rob. What happened? Well, I'll show you. Here's the order. Send a bottom layer. Now it's behind. Except now, if you look, it's a little too far behind, right? So we'll just inch that up. Ta -da. Perfect. Basically, this is kind of just like those old stickers you had, the little vinyl sticker with a plastic kind of uh, laminated background, and you could stick them wherever you wanted to them and restick them and peel them off. It's kind of kind of like what this is. Everything's built uh, to be able to work together with their individual tile pieces. Now you can easily make things that are just tileable, right? Like you have nine slice sprites and things like that. Like these are nine slice sprites, so you can just pull them apart and they won't get bigger and what have you. But sometimes you want things to look a little bit more complicated. A little bit more interesting to look at. I'm actually going to redo these and take the brown, um, these brown pieces off so I can actually use this as like a dug down uh, piece in the ground. Because right now it's very limiting. And then I can also still add this with this so it's not that big of a deal. So I'm actually going to redo those. Maybe today. So, next, we have a corner, an inner corner piece. And we went to the wrong thing. We'll go back to 34. Now, inner corner. Obviously, a little too big. Send a bottom layer. Boop. It's behind. So I'm going to go back here, grab that, it's actually like, it's a tedious job, but it's also like one of the things I enjoy, it's kind of like doing interior decorating or something like that, like, you're basically creating an entire world for people to just run around in kind of get lost in, and you can kind of get lost in it while you're working on it. You definitely always kind of have to think like a big kid, I guess, like what would be fun in this situation for you? Or I should say for the player, or at least what do you think would be fun to the player? 
everybody's different. So, I mean, everybody has their own kind of take on things, but it's fun to think in this experiential way. Like, how is the person going to encounter this area? I'm going to go send back the layer, so that way it overlies that. And sometimes I do that. There we go. Ta-da. Now I know what you're thinking, like, where's the water? I'm like, I'll add it eventually. Just chill out. Be a little bit more patient. So this is essentially how you use all these pieces. And of course I had to go in and painstakingly draw them, color them, and make sure they actually linked together well. Um, but you know, that's the game development. It's part of the fun, right? Mm, it's looking pretty good. Okay. Now again, this isn't true top down, right? So everything's kind of angled um, when you look at it. So you wanna just add one. Whoa! <laughs> Sometimes when you hold Shift and you scroll, it like phew, turns into Sonic the Hedgehog. And takes off. All right. <laughs> So now we're coming around to like another like kind of uh, corner area that'll then go off into the river. And you'll notice, oh no, it peeks out, right? So we'll take care of that in a little bit. Right now though, we got this to add. So we'll add some more grass here. Zero to the bottom. Nope, nope. So this is one of those instances where we actually have to mess with the Z order. So we go Z order, edit Z order. <laughs> All right. That's really funny. All right, so. If you look at the Z order here, we're going to take this and we're going to put it below the other thing here. I'm going to put it below that, but it's going to be above the river vertical. There you go. Ta-da. Slide it over. And, uh, I mean, it feels to me like it would be less interesting looking to go immediately right here and match it perfectly up to this, right? I mean, I could do that, but to me, it just it wouldn't look interesting. It would look just like a cutout block, you know? I mean, it already kind of does, and I could add, like, little variations and stuff if I want to. Um, but then you also have to think, right, like, it looks interesting, cool, but, um, you also have to be able to navigate through here pretty well. You have to be able to run around, fight enemies and what have you, and if you do too much of this stuff, if you, like, cut out too much of the ground that Sid has to walk on, you really kind of limit Sid's movement, the way he can fight with enemies and things like that, so that's another thing you have to kind of take into account, is, like, what looks interesting, but at the same time, how does it affect gameplay? You go like this, put in this one. Now this one can be over the top, or it can be below it. It really depends on what I feel like at any given time. Alright, so then... We're gonna go... And grab that. 
That's an entirely different area. Alright. Z order, it's in the bottom of the layer. We're actually going to pull this down. Because otherwise it's going to be too far up. And then when it curves up, it's going to be like right here. And it's going to look really weird. And I want to see quite a bit of water. So I'm going to pull this over. Pull it down. Cool. All right. And then we'll add this up corner piece. Add that. Cool. We'll just do this. I do a lot of weird things with my mouth and tongue when I'm concentrating, if you haven't been able to see yet. It's a weird tick I have, I guess. Okay. So, yeah, there we go. Palms, for the most part, done. Um, still have a couple things to do, obviously. Okay. So now, we're going to lock that. And we're going to copy this. Just copy all of it. And we're going to paste it. Obviously, we don't need it that be that big. And we're going to put it on the background items layer. And now we're going to use it to cover those up. There. Kind of a cheap and dirty way to do it. Now go like this, and we go, make sure we're still on the background items later, layer, like I said, it's kind of one of those things you have to make sure, right? And you don't want to overlap it too much, because again, that's just more image that you're not even seeing that the game's going to have to process, so, and these are all tileable backgrounds too in Construct, which you can easily do. So we go like this, Z order, send a bottom layer, boom, there's your water. Obviously not finished. And we go like this, and like I said, don't overlap too much. So we go basically to about right there. Send the bottom layer. And when I am actually done, when everything, when all the assets and stuff are on the screen, like trees and such, I will go back and I will go into the background color and I will duplicate it and only put it where I need to to cover things up. So it's not just one giant green thing on the background. Now, obviously, I've got some overlap here. That's easy enough to fix, go like that. Cool. And then we go like this. One more time. And pull it. Through the bottom layer. Ta-da. Of course now, Sid is floating in the water. So we'll put him there. He's on ground now. Okay. So, now... Like I said, we have to make our little island, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did with those other pieces. And we're going to do it about like this. And we'll put it right, right there, I think.
It's like, I, I mean, I could have made these things tileable to where you just grab them and pull them and whatever, but it's really hard to kind of cover up those seams with these rocks and things like that. So sometimes it's just easier to make things to where they're modular and you can just grab them and overlap them and do what you need to do. Okay. We'll grab the other side. Hopefully you guys aren't having to listen to my Spotify music. Ooh, ooh. So now we're going to go edit the order. Ta-da. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that'll work. Let's actually look at the size of this castle, right? So obviously, we've got an issue. That's fine. So... Here's what we do. We just grab this. And we pull them. And that should still give Sid plenty of room to move. Like this. Apparently, it wants me to click on them individually, which is inconvenient, but fine. I'll go up here and we'll look at this. Okay. Perfect. It's fine that, you know, this overlaps a little bit or what have you. Okay. Like I said, like we did before. Pop this down. Since only that one side moved. Okay, so now I've got plenty of room to have this. Whoa! <laughs> All right. So obviously, I'm going to go like this. Hold this one over here. It's fine that they touch or whatever. Obviously, this is going to kind of tell us where it needs to be. Cool. I'll probably put it like up here or something. That'll work. So now again we're going to go into our long vertical pieces. We're going to go from top to bottom. OK. 
Okay. And now what are we going to do? You probably already know. We're going to go and send these to the bottom of the layer. Except we're going to put them below. So they're all selected already. We're going to put them below the left side. Alrighty then, so actually this is going to come up, this is actually going to work really cool, so I'm going to, I'll explain it to you when I get there, <laughs> but it's going to work out really good, I think, because I'm going to put a bridge that will allow you to basically cross from here to here, there will be another like, little th actually I'm gonna probably have to lift that up but that's fine to a little dock that's gonna have something special on it later I'm not gonna spoil it for everyone but you'll only be able to reach the back half so you're like well hell how the hell do I get to the front right because it's basically gonna be pretty tight you're not gonna be able to come around the side of the castle and go in the front and you know the way to get to the front is going to be revealed later on but it's going to be something that you can reach kind of it's going to make you wonder like how do i get over there later and you'll have to figure that out i like things like that like things that you remember like oh crap i bet i could get to that area now now that i have this item or what have you dang it stop Okay. Okay. And I'm basically making sure the blue just matches up here, like links. I'm gonna Whoopsies. Sure, I'm gonna do this one at a time. There we go. Put it below that one too. Cool. I know that looks really weird right now. It's just cut out sitting on water. Dang it. And that looks pretty close, I'd say. Then we'll go edit Z order, put it to the very bottom. Okay, like I said, we'll probably have to bring this side up a little bit to make room for the little bridge and stuff that I have there. Which is that bridge. So, we'll put that there soon. Okay. So now we need all the back pieces. Go like this. I'm going to do the other corner piece. And now grab the flat one. And again, I have to uh, edit the Z order. 
but I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, make sure there's no cracks. No crack, okay. And again, it's fine that that kind of overlaps. Kind of helps break it up a little bit. Cool. Let me go Z order, edit Z order. Okay, we're going to basically put this behind everything except the water. Ta da. So now, again, we need the green. Lock it. And we're going to, again, put this behind everything except the water. And this is basically how you can work and construct to, um, which I like. I mean, it's there's plenty of other game engines that do very similar things. The only reason that I didn't use Unity for this project is, well, A, um, my programming is a little limited. Like, my programming knowledge um, definitely needs some work, obviously. And this is an event-based engine, which makes it easier for me, but for Unity, you can use things like Playmaker and stuff to make things easier on you if you don't know a lot of programming. But at the time that I started making Sword and Board, which is about three years ago, um, there wasn't really... And ding! See, look at that. Cool. There wasn't a lot of uh, 2D tools in Unity yet, and it felt kind of like... I was using a rocket launcher to kill a spider in my house. It was just way too much. I didn't entirely need all that functionality. Um, and I really hated having to deal with like isometric camera views and all that other stuff when I was trying to do just a simple 2D game. So I just figured, you know, what the heck, I'll go and I'll actually use an engine that is mainly 2D specific. And so I found Construct and gave it a try, and I really liked it, so I just kind of stuck with it. Plus, it, had a, it has a, a lot of good exporting options as far as the platforms and things they can export to. Okay, so we're going to go like this. Edit the order. Find the damn thing. Which, it's usually pretty easy to do. And since I know where it'll go, right? Because it's the last one, it'll always go to the bottom of the layer. Except the only reason we're editing the Z order is because you need to send it to the bottom layer, but not all the way to the bottom. There we go. Now it's still above the pieces it needs to be above and below the other ones. Cool. Perfect. Okay, so now, let's see how this sizes up. Yeesh, okay. That's fine. This doesn't necessarily need to be that far up. So this is where it gets kind of more into the design side of things, right? So it's like, okay, I've got all this stuff. And I can fiddle with it, and I can change how it's used. 
empty order. Okay, so we're gonna go. Hmm. It needs to be above that and that. So we're just gonna move it here. Okay. Cool. Alright, now this will definitely fit. This is gonna have a very kind of in-depth uh, story element to it, which actually I'm going to try something that I've never tried before. Not that. I'm going to edit this Z order, if I can do it right, and I'm going to put it below these, but above the water. Yeah, I actually like that. That looks good. Hell, I could even do this. <laughs> Use it to change the size, whatever. Now, it's obviously not exactly optimal, because there's all this area here that's not even being seen. So, I think what I'm going to do... Yeah, why not? Let's try something in the recording, right? What, what What's the worst that could happen? So we're going to delete that. And we're going to make a smaller... We're going to clone this. We're going to put it right next to it. So now it's called Bridge Up. Bridge Up 2. Okay. We're going to go into its animations which you really, it's not animated, so um, the animations themselves don't really mean anything, but you can crop it. If, really? Oh yeah, well that's a shame. Okay, no, that's fine. So, we'll do this differently. So we are going to go into Photoshop. And we are going to find that damn bridge. Bridge, open, ta-da. Alright, but that one doesn't have the shadow. Okay, there we go. Bridge resized. I guarantee that's the one we need. So, we'll just crop this one down. We'll just crop it right at the shadow. Actually, no, we'll crop it like right there. Ta da. Now we'll save this as something else. Oop. Into cropped save. Cool. So we'll go back to construct and we'll click on this. We'll add a frame to the animation. Why? Because this. Sword and board, bridge, open. God dang it, what did I do? Oh, I just forgot to tell it. Duh. Okay. So I added the frame. Again, sword and board, bridge, open. There we are. Now. When you want to change something, like you would in this case, here's our bridge. Here's what it's going to look like. You take this frame out, and it automatically changes. Ta-da! So now we have an optimized image that we can use in our scene. That's not completely ridiculously large and taking up unnecessary information in memory. Perfect. There's going to be something sitting there. But, like I said, I won't exactly say what. 
Okay, so then we'll put the other bridge. Now, this bridge is actually meant to uh, be used with something larger. Actually, Okay. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we should make a little bridge. Right? I mean, we could. Do we have anything that we can use for a small bridge? Oh, well. Ah. <sighs> See, so this is where the design stuff comes in. So, that bridge is obviously too large. And, um, in all honesty, I don't, I don't really feel like making one. So, we're going to make a little design decision here. We're going to move the castle for now. Nope. And we're going to kind of link these together. Pull that up. I've never actually either, I've never done this either. Okay. Let me match those up. Okay. Z order. Z order. Keep this on top of this, but below those. Sometimes you just annoyingly have to move things out of the way. Okay. Now we go back to this. Okay. So obviously there's a, a little something there that we need to do. So as before, things super tiny, just as much as we need to cover that up. Now we're going to do it below the sides. Actually, we're pretty much going to do it below most everything. Z order. And... Hmm. 
Yeah. No. Hmm. Again, these are little design things. Ah, game development. Isn't it fun? Okay. Okay. So I definitely want it below the corner piece. Yeah, that'll work. Even with the other side, because I don't think you'll actually see it. Send the top layer, boom. <laughs> and that, my friends, is how you disguise stuff. That's also the great fun thing about doing a 2D game. Is you can cut corners here and there. Okay, so we've got a land bridge now. That'll still only take you to the back. And leave you wondering, how the hell do I get back there? So now... Basically... So this is like our main structure. I guess you could say. So we're going to now decide on our basic, just kind of like, what do we want here? What do we want to decorate this thing with, right? So these are in two pieces, and I'll show you why in a little bit. But these main trees here are in two pieces. So we just kind of go on there and there. You don't ever want to, unless you plan on carrying something over to the other layout next to it, for the most part, you don't want to put something solid on the edge of a layout. Um, unless, like I said, you carry it over to the next layout, because otherwise, when you come in from that layout, you'll like, hit this tree, and you'll move down, and just a bunch of terrible things will happen. So, yeah, we'll put a tree there, we'll put a tree there. Maybe one like right over here. I think I'm gonna move this up a little and I'm gonna put some torches. Make it look a little more menacing, I guess. So move that up a little. Take a look. Uh, a little more. There we go. All right. Perfect. Oh, yeah. So, another thing that we have here River Rocks. Right now, I've only got one, so I'm probably going to need to make a couple more, animate them and whatnot. Um, again, you want to edit the Z order. And we go down like this. Ta -da. Except now it's below that. Just kind of got to be like conscious of where you're placing them. Yay! But as I was saying in the last video, like nothing really except for these river stones. Um, and the river stones are black lined because um, I need, I want the river to stand out. Um, but most everything else, like these trees, stumps, um, UI, they don't have a black outline. Because Sid has a black outline, and I want Sid to be kind of like the main focal point. So, 
We've got our stones in now. Maybe I'll put one over here. That's probably all right, right? Okay. Then we're gonna add these. Let's grab our tree tops. And we've got a specific layer for those. Tree structure tops. Tree slash structure tops, I should say. Did you accidentally? Of course you did. Make sure we're working in the right layer first. I'm gonna link that up. Now, I kind of took this idea from Diablo, but I thought it was a good idea. With something like this, that takes up a good amount of real estate on the screen. Uh, you really need a way to kind of still be able to navigate and see yourself, right? So what happens when Sid goes behind this? Well, I'll show you. We'll actually add a collision box here. So collision, you can actually give each of these. Like if I wanted to go into this and give it a polygonal mass, and make it solid I could. I could draw its collision box. Um, but that can get really performance heavy. The more points you have to make the polygon for its collision, uh, the slower things can perform. So I just like to grab a box and be like, not on this wrong layer for one. I like to not be on the wrong layer. So, it's on the collision layer now. All right, make sure you're on the right layer. Then you just basically go like this. And you kind of put it in the middle. That way Sid can walk up to it and he can walk behind it and things like that. And then we'll kind of figure out what needs to be tweaked as we play around with it. And I'll probably do like something like this. There we go. Now the collision will be invisible when it's actually played. And our zones for our camera. This is how your camera will work. Some funky stuff happening over here, which we'll remove. As you can see, this is camera spots for uh, an entirely different layout but it'll work for now we can fix those later mm. luckily these load times will be vastly improved when the game's actually done because right now it's basically just generating a preview Extrapolating all the event sheets and all the layouts, putting them together. But when it's actually exported, it's almost instantaneous for the most part. So, loading up here, I'll show you how the trees work. And then I'll also kind of show you collision for the because right now you'll be able to walk over the water completely. Ta-da! And of course this map is wrong because I haven't changed it yet. So, we'll walk over here, bump into the tree, walk around the tree, and then the top will actually dim a little bit so you can see yourself through it. That way you don't just completely lose yourself. That's almost perfect, except, see that? You can see yourself through that. But that's pretty good. Alright, so we'll close that. And we'll kill our zones.
No. Actually. Do that. There we go. That'll work. So now with the collision. We're gonna do the collision for the river real quick. I think these already might have their own collision already, but oh well. So when you come down to the edge of the river. When you come down from the top, you're going to immediately hit this, and that's fine. And when you're coming up from the bottom, you actually want to be able to overlap this a little bit, right? So you want Sid to be able to, so it looks like he's actually standing at the edge, because otherwise, if you were to just cover the entire river, Sid would be like right here. It looks like he's like four or five feet back from the edge of the river. You want him to be able to actually come about right here. So we can just move the collision up. And then he should be able to get there and before he actually starts bumping in anything. So then, we'll just pull this over. Cool, cool. And the collision should also, because it doesn't move, um, obviously, the collision also should be using render cells, which it's currently not, so we will fix that. Make sure our backgrounds, yep, are using render cells. Good, good. So, collision. We're all right. Zones should also be using render cells, because those are large things that we need to use uh, to control the camera. So, we're going to bring this down here. Ta-da. And now, see what I did there? I want it to basically be the same. I don't want it to, like, bump up a little, because then it'll, it'll bump into it, which I don't really want right now. So, I'll just kind of pull this over. Cool, cool. Might as well duplicate that and drag it over. Okay. Perfect. Now, I want Sid to be able to kind of go behind this, right? But then kind of have to, like, go behind it and then walk up a little. So, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to pull this down, because here's the wall, the back wall. I want him to be able to kind of like go up to about right there. And I'll grab Sid, once I unlock his lair, and kind of use him to judge. Right, that's pretty good, actually. Lift up a little. Okay. And we'll pull this down just a tad. And of course, I don't want to just pull this up because then it's going to look like you can you're hitting nothing. So I want it to feel like you're actually hitting this. All right, same thing with the uh, this one down here. Hit the top of this. And we'll use Sid to kind of judge where things should be. Okay. Basically customizing all the collision for everything. It's a little time consuming, but um, it's pretty cool and you can actually watch it all be used together. Okay. 
And we'll use Sid to kind of judge that too. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, maybe a little up. Boop, boop. Cool. And obviously, we don't need this huge overlap. Um, just like we don't need this huge overlap. So try to make it so they overlap as little as possible. Otherwise, you're just making the images bigger than they need to be. And then, of course, you know, the game has to render all that. Even if it's invisible, it's still it's still memory that's being used. So there you go. So in this case, this does kind of have to overlap because otherwise we need to use multiple pieces to make this work, um, which then creates a problem because it's not completely flush with each other. So we'll just do this. We'll make sure this doesn't have an overlap because frankly it doesn't need it. Like this, barely any just to make sure there actually is something. Cool. Okay. So now we gotta basically drag this over. And again, this is where the whole flush issue becomes. There you go. We'll just drop that down to there. Kind of try to mimic essentially this side, right? We can zoom in, kind of see how good this is. Then we'll just pull this all the way down. All the way down. Okay. And of course, like I said, the Collision you won't actually be able to see, um, obviously, once the project or, or the game is running. They call them projects in Construct. Okay. Okay, so here is the one little thing, right? So I'm going to make it. And I'm not going to tell you exactly why, but I'm going to change it. So the collision is different right here. Pull that one down. Cool. Perfect. Actually, you know what? Hmm.
Those need to be above that. And that needs to be above that. But... I'm just going to put these above. Ta-da! There we go. Do some shuffling. Okay. We'll just do that. Okay. Good, good. And now, like I said, figure out the collision. Okay. I'll try to kind of like mimic the top of that, right? Up here. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to run this layout. And we're going to see how this runs. Of course, it's going to give me the stupid warning first. No, we're not. So, I'm going to show you how the collision will work, hopefully, if it works properly. And then I'm going to make sure that the item that you need to cross that section works. But I'm going to make sure that you don't see it. <laughs> because that would spoil the fun. So I gotta make sure everything is still fun for when this game actually comes out, because otherwise I'll just spoil it all in the dev blog and then nobody will play it. Like, oh, I know exactly how to do this. Okay, so, yep, can't, can't do that. But I can walk up here and I can stand on this. See, that's an issue right there. This is a little too far off the edge. That's fine. I mean, it's not fine. Of course, like, we can go. Because that doesn't have collision currently. This is fine. This one feels good. See, now I'm... I basically have to, like, get up. It actually feels like I'm running into something back here. It's right there. Like, oh, crap. Then I go up. I can actually run into the uh, thing. Oh, little glitches. Right here. It's from the water. Uh, that's something we can fix later. In fact, we can just go into the main sheet. Water ripple. It spawns on the interactive layer. So it's going to... Spawn... Uh, 
what are we uh, on background layer hmm no I'll actually worry about that later actually I know exactly uh, I know uh An easy way to fix that, but I'll do it later. But fun little bugs that you can find while you're working on stuff. So back to this. Bring this down a little closer. Same with this side. Bring that down. So now is when you are going to not look at my uh, game. I'm going to keep this private. You'll probably hear some sounds. And that is it. We'll see what happens. Oh, like that little overlay? I like the overlay. And if you're just watching this on YouTube, which somehow you managed to find this, I guess maybe through my Twitter. Um, if you're just watching this on YouTube, go like the Facebook page. I will constantly update it whenever I stream to Twitch, um, which should start again here soon once we get all the internet stuff figured out. Because I don't want to, like I said at the beginning of this, make you guys watch a terrible stream that buffers every five seconds or gets like a frame a second. All right. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Perfect. All righty then. Ah. <sighs> Okay, now that I've been able to see that it works. But yeah, this is basically how uh, environments work. Um, I'll probably show the actual finished one later on, but I'm gonna go and fix these so I might be able to actually use them in this environment and uh, probably build the rest out. So I will see you guys later. Peace.